All right, everybody, we are back again. Another episode of Closet Chef. I'm your host, Abdul Rahman bin Muhammad, Dream Chaser number one. And today's guest, we have LaShawn B. Hansen on Closet Chef. Welcome, LaShawn. How are you doing? You. Today? I'm good. I'm good. Excited. Good. So, all right, I'm going to have to be honest. I went on Facebook and I was checking out some of your videos. You're not like our average like closet chef. You are like some like serious. You have your own show, Let's Talk Food. Yeah. And you you shoot that live, right? Yeah, it's a hobby. Yeah. Well, I mean, some of the stuff you were putting together would look like yummy, yum, yum, yum Thank in the tummy, you. tummy, No, tummy. all the food is delicious, but yeah. it's definitely hobby. I'm a social worker first. That's right. I, but I, I come home and I cook for the kids and I cook for the family and I cook for my husband and that's what that's how I express, you know, gratitude, yeah. love, and affection. I love it. Yeah. All right, so. What are we cooking today? Because let me put on my, uh, I got a new apron, by the way, people. Very uh, good. I'm figuring good. I give you a nice black apron. My last one was white. Well, we're going to have the um, Rodney over at uh, uh, Exclusive Lines. Exclusive Lines. Yeah. We have to have something put on there. Closet this chef. is Closet Chefs on yeah, there. Yeah. So go ahead and tell me Sean sent you. Sean sent me, okay. Um, <laughs> so this is a Brazilian, this is a Brazilian inspired shrimp spicy soup. And the reason I say it's inspired is because it's not verbatim the recipe. Right. Any recipe I have, either if it's given it to my grandmother, from my grandmother or myself, I usually put my own little twist on it. Your grandmother Beatrice? My, my, <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Yeah. Yes. One of my grandmothers is Beatrice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. she was a great cook. And okay. then my abuela Maria. Okay. So I'm half black, half Puerto Rican. So both families were very good, good cooks. Right. And then I love Chinese. I love Brazilian. I love Indian. I love Pakistani food. I love all food. So you're like trying different stuff all the time. You, you, you're this cooking stuff. This is emerging constantly. My yeah. household is, you know, one. I, I rarely cook Puerto Rican food because um, we don't eat a lot of rice in the house. Right. But I do cook Pakistani, Indian, uh, Brazilian, uh, Chinese, uh, Italian, stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, I make it all. So you got your wine going too? I have my wine. All right, so I, got I never cook without all. wine. Okay, I got this is lemon water. water. Yes, it's yeah. delicious. I never cook without wine. Mm -hmm. So um, this is Brazilian shrimp inspired okay. uh, uh, soup, and it's not all of it. The only reason it's not fully Brazilian is because there's no rice in it. Okay. That's the only reason. Yes. So what do we got? What, what kind of ingredients do we have over so, here? So I um, so we have coconut milk here. Okay. We have roasted red bell peppers. Uh -huh. um, uh, excuse me, tomatoes. We have olive oil, olives, olive oil infused with. Uh, Yellow stuff. No, infused oh. with garlic. Okay. We have salt, pepper, we have red pepper flakes, uh, we have regular pepper, we have ginger, we have fresh cilantro, garlic, red bell tomato, uh, peppers, and onions. Now let me ask you this. So on one of your shows I was watching you, you grabbed some salt and then the salt <laughs> joint started doing it by itself. So let me say this. So since then I've, I've, I've done review because yeah. I got, shows, got those from HSN but I cook so much right. that they broke. So they're not very good. They're uh, probably good just to like sit down and kind of like um, host. Show off but, every now and then like, yeah. But, they're but shout out to H HSN, you guys got to get your products right. a little bit better. Yeah. Man. We're going to so, use them on these So shows. I've since written a review and basically said these are like really shitty. <laughs> so anyway, so that's kind of where I'm at with that. But yeah. I do have the salt and the pepper here. Okay, perfect. Okay. So I don't usually cook with an audience um, unless... I'm doing it live, and so you'll see like the stuff. And I'll, I'm never on anybody else's show, so please forgive me if there are any mishaps oh, or any mistakes don't or anything worry. like that. I'll take I'm care of all your mishaps and mistakes. That's what I'm here for. I'm usually in here jamming, yeah. drinking wine, just thinking about the people I'm gonna feed. Right, you know, right. That's kind of where I'm at. So the first step that I'm gonna um, do when I'm making the Brazilian soup is I'm gonna add some olive oil. It's infused with fresh garlic. I usually always keep fresh garlic in my olive oil uh -huh. because they go well together. Okay. So it just makes sense. And then I usually heat up the pan. You can put your hand in that pan for me, not all the way down. You know, everybody wants to do this. Like, feel that? It's, I can is that feel warm? It. Yes, okay. Yes, so warm. then let that pan get let that pan get warm. Oh my God! Yeah. I know. Let that pan get warm before you add any olive oil or butter to it, right? right? Because you don't want it to burn. So the reason they're asking you to touch it is because they want you to know that this pan is hot. And when it's hot, you can add the oil or the butter. Okay. If you add it before and the pan doesn't warm up, you're going to burn it. Ah, uh, and we don't want to burn it. We don't want to burn anything unless we're trying to burn. grilling or something. Yeah. So now we're going to go um, to a six, which is like a medium high. And we're going to put the olive oil, which is infused with the garlic. 
garlic. I like it. All right, and we're gonna let that go. We're now gonna add our ingredients. So we're gonna add the um, onions and the bell peppers and the garlic first. We're gonna leave the cilantro for a little later. Okay. If you will, grab this and just stir it up. Yes. And you, you wanna smell it? Oh yeah. You know, really it. get in there, hold this, hold, hold this it. side, yep, yep. and really get in there, don't be shy. Okay, then really get really, it going. Really get in there. Oh yeah, I can smell it. Yeah. yeah. And when you can smell it, you start to get excited, ready? <laughs> yeah, it makes you think, off camera, I'm gonna be eating very soon. Not only will you be eating, you'll be feeding me. Because cooking is a service. Oh. It's about service to oh. others. Yes, and right? I'm the person you're going to be serving yeah. today. The <laughs> closet chef. <laughs> so we're going to add some ginger here. Now, I didn't use fresh ginger, but this is as good as it gets. Okay. This is a whole foods ginger. Okay. Um, keep in mind, I am a uh, career woman, so I work full time. Right. And so I come home and cook after um, I've worked all day and I'm taking care of the kids. So exactly. the easier that it can be for me, the better. So this is like, you know, these dishes that you do on Every your day. show yeah. and, and for your family are like after, after work, work, I come in and bang it out real quick. And yes. And, and kids then, are eating good, oh, family yeah, eating good. Yeah, yeah. And so here we have some basil. We're going to add the basil, some dry basil. Okay. Keep in mind that dry ingredients are more potent okay. than fresh ones. I didn't know so that. So if you get a recipe and you don't have the fresh ingredients, you may want to look it up on Google and see what the dry measurements will be. Okay. Because dry are always more potent. So it's like you just you just dropped a bang of basil up in yeah. it. And, and it, it actually gave it a little different smell. Too. Yeah, and I have the recipe on Let's Talk Food. I have my okay. actual recipes with my pictures yeah. on my page, Let's Talk Food. And there are several Let's Talk Food um, pages. You notice that. No, I, I just know, found I, you. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that there were so many Let's Talk Food um, Facebook pages. So but so I have the full recipe for the Brazilian inspired shrimp soup on there. So we're going to add some pepper. Pepper, yeah. Yeah, and you really, you know, you want to get ex excited by, about the aromas. Now you do know I developed a style of how, yeah, of how to throw stuff into um, a pot. So I've given you one of the hardest ingredients. Salt. Salt. Is that hard? Because if you mess up with the salt, it's messed up. It's not messed up. I mean, for people that cook a long time, can add some sugar and pepper to it and kind of get it together. It but you got to be careful with salt because stuff be salty. You yeah. really want spicy. No, right, right. I mean, so you got to. So you saying don't give too much salt. Never put too much salt in your food. You rather put less. Yep. You rather put less salt than um. <laughs> you rather. Yeah. You'd rather put less salt than more salt. Less salt than more salt. Because if you salt it too much, then you have to repair it. All right, I feel good about Salt's it. Salt's not what Christopher Columbus was looking for. He was looking for spices. Oh. So, right, so. go ahead and, uh, what the word? So extra. <laughs> Dude, we developed this early in the career. That's slow motion, you know that? Watch this, watch this, watch this. Lord help me. <laughs> Is that enough? That's good, keep going. Oh, a little bit more? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Don't be too um, heavy with that. That's very spicy stuff. But see, the colors are like, man, amazing, and the smell. Yeah. I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. And then we're gonna. This is half of a jar of um, Spanish olives from Spain. Mm. I'm gonna put those in. Yeah. That's gonna add salt too. So okay. that's why you you don't want to salt too much. Right. If you're, if you're making olives or um, smell them olives. Yeah. You want to just be careful. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna have um, some cilantro. Yeah. Boom. Oh, okay. Right. So this is all the way. Looking so colorful, beautiful. I don't. I mean. And then we're gonna put put it up. Once those vegetables are in there, let's yeah. put it up. Going up. So this stove is induction, which is different than electric because it acts just as like a gas stove. Okay. So the minute you put it up, you're going to start to feel that heat the same way that a chef wants a gas stove. Okay. Um, much different than electric. So now we're going to show all the people that all the mixture, <laughs> as you can see, you got, you got the cilantro, you got the tomatoes, you got the olives, you got the um, onions, everything in there. 
coming together and the, the things are heating up just yes. like you said it was. It will heat it heats up right away because it's induction. So it's just like a gas stove. Alright, so now we're gonna put the um, red roasted tomatoes. Yeah. If um if you can't roast them yourself, grab a can of red uh, fire roasted tomatoes and put them in there. Now you're making a stew, right? Like every good soup has a stew. And so he's doing some dance here. What's that dance? Oh, this is too dancing. Okay. I'm glad we know. Yo, it. this is beautiful. I mean, if I don't eat it, I would still. I might need to take a picture of it. Well, you will eat it. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna eat it. Yeah. yeah. So, so then there's that. there's coconut milk here. Okay. Now this is a little lumpy though. Tell us why is it lumpy? Well, because it's real coconut milk, okay. right? It's not water. Okay. Um. So. So it's fun. it's like the the meat of the coconut. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. And it's gonna add the um the texture that you're looking for in the Brazilian soup. Right. But you're not going to add the rice because then we would be making authentic Brazilian soup. Right. Um, so go ahead and, and keep stirring that, and then you can, while you're doing that, take the acid, mm -hmm. grab every ingredient, you put want that everything. in there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I saw on one of your shows you were like, um, take like scrubbing the pan out. Somebody just try to be nice and pretty, and they just threw something in the pan. You were like, yo, you left a whole bunch yeah. of stuff in there. Yeah. One of the things about um, cooking is you never want to waste food. There's right. like um, an enormous amount of food waste in this country. Yes, there and is. So what you want to do is you want to like every ingredient that I don't use, I will at the end of the night when I'm uh, cleaning up the kitchen, I'll package it and I'll reuse it again. Okay. So I even reuse the uh, ends of the cilantro. Right. So a lot of people just take the top. But there's so much food waste, you really want to use every single bit of things. And with these, with these, if you uh, go ahead and freeze these mm -hmm. and put a wet paper towel over them, you can reuse them as much as you want, right? right? You don't want to throw them away because they're expensive, number one, but people are, like, hungry. They don't want to waste food. So how long have you been cooking? I've been cooking since I was, like, 11. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember, like, being the first thing you ever cooked? Like, something that you said, okay, this is when I first really got it, but somebody can say, oh, she could, she could burn yeah. a little bit. Um, the first thing I cooked was an omelet. If you can make an omelet without breaking it, tearing it with, you know, the right, the right shredded cheese, right. then you can cook. You can like, cook. if okay. you can make breakfast, you can cook. If somebody's breakfast is whack, yeah. they can't cook. So I always ask people to make breakfast to see where they're at with right. it. Because if you, like, overcook eggs or whatever, that's not a really good. But the first thing I made at 11 was an omelet. An omelet. Our new show was called, Can You Cook Breakfast? <laughs> I don't know your house and have pancakes. Can you cook breakfast without burning eggs, right? Because some people overcook their eggs, and we know that, you know? Right, right. And, um, so the first thing I cooked was an omelet. The second thing I cooked was a um, easy over egg, fried egg. Yep. And um, then I started making, like, fried chicken and, and uh, macaroni and cheese and Spanish rice, which I had to throw out, like, four times because Spanish rice is not as easy as it looks. Okay. And so I just started doing that. My mother would be like, get out of the kitchen, you're going to burn yourself. So you like, were in there by yourself trying to cook all this stuff? All the time. My oh, mom really? was a great cook. My yeah. grandma was a great cook. Both my, my abuela was a great cook. My stepmother was a great cook. Right. Um, my father is a good cook. Um, my stepfather is a good cook. So everybody cooks, men right. and women. So you're from a family of, of, of cooks. A lot of cooks. And they would work. They worked and they cooked. Right. Yeah, they, they weren't like stay at home. Yeah, cooks. I'm like, a, um, my mom's a great cook. Mm -hmm. I'm a really a good eater. Like, I'm known to like... <laughs> Eat, and then I'm really a good cleaner. Well, I'm that's actually good. like that's one of my. You know, so like for the show, I'm like a celebrity, so I gotta go. <laughs> but at, at home, no. I'm like, so what do you do when you have two celebrities in the kitchen? Well, let's so see. Then you Greek, share you know, the chore. No, what happens is you say, "Is this your house?" And then you just be like, "I'm out." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Kind of, kind of what Randall does. All right. So now that we have all this, yeah. If we have, um, this is basically. It right, right, too much wine, but yeah. um, so this is basically a stand, a handheld mixer. Yep, yeah. so you want to just be careful with this mixer, you want to make sure it's on tight, mm -hmm. and then you're just gonna put it in. Yep, yeah. and you're just gonna chop up some of those ingredients. Now, one of the things our grandmothers and our mothers and our great grandmothers did is they let soup cook maybe all day, and the reason they did that is because they wanted all these flavors to marry right. each other. Right. But when you have a handheld mixer, you can make soup. Fast. After work, mm. because what you're doing is you're encouraging these flavors to marry one another. Right, right. Okay, so here's the handheld mixer, and we're just going in here. Now, if you don't have a handheld mixer, and I realized there were many years I didn't have half these tools because I was broke. Yep. Then you use a masher, and you go in there and you mash the ingredients together, right. and you let them marry one another because soup 
is not soup unless it's married. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and crush those yeah, in there for me. I, I thought I was gonna get a chance to use the, the mixer. Like why am well, I doing I'm, I'm, hard I, I would have, but I want you to burn yourself. Mm. I burned my forehead using this one oh, time. Yeah. And people were ranking on me like, don't you know? And they didn't know that. I was using this. Because I'm bald under this hat. <laughs> so yeah, go ahead and mash those together. And that's like something that I developed because I come home from work and I want to cook something fast. You can make rice on the side with this. You can make noodles on the side with this. But I like to have it just as it is. And it's really getting hot in here too. This is this, this mm -hmm. boiling up now. So we have shrimp. Yep. Um, and so I will bring out the shrimp and show you. But yes. it's always nice to have one vegetarian dish. Right. One seafood dish. Right. One meat dish. Right. And one poultry dish. Okay. So when I'm doing Thanksgiving or Christmas or even at our wedding, we had a dish for everyone. Right? Awesome. It's like, like we do eggplant on Monday because it's like meatless Mondays in the house. So it's good to have dishes for every. So one. so this is basically the spot, right? Sunday, everybody comes over no, here. No, it's just me, my husband, and my kids. What? No. It seems like this would be the, the spot. It should be, no. Like, but so she lives close enough to our houses where this could be the spot. We might need to really get close to Doug and be like, yo, son. So, I mean, yo, you going home anytime? Uh, no. But Sean is, is cooking. But it is the spot for Thanksgiving, for Easter, obviously, for yeah. Christmas. Um, which uh, for New Year's Eve it is the spot, but right. for Sundays he works really hard all week, so it's just like it's it's, And I want to um, show you what I do with the bread. So basically, when I'm making the soup, I always add bread. Um, if I'm not adding rice, just the starch. So they sell these loaves at um, a Stop and Shop. So you want to take it off here before you cut it. This is a bread knife, by the way. Right. Um, because the other knife will not work. You just like look like an idiot cutting yeah. bread. So we're gonna put some olive oil here, and obviously I stole this uh, from my Italian friends. Right. And this is olive oil and garlic, and then we're gonna add some red pepper flakes to that olive oil, and then we're gonna. So you 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 go out and peep other people's games. So well, you say you know from my Italian friends, I stole this. Well, we eat well. Right. So we don't we don't only eat well at home when um when we go out we eat well. So we don't eat fast food. Right. So when we save our money, we go to places like fine dining places. Yeah, yeah. And so I go there and draw inspiration, and I come home and cook it. I like because it. you don't always want to waste your money right. on like a two hundred dollar meal when you can do this at home for like forty. Right. Right. right? Yeah. So that's basically where I draw my inspiration from is fine dining. Mm. So then um this is the bread that they serve at Italian restaurants. Right. You can warm it up um, or leave it cold. And so basically, what you wanna do and what you'll see is you put this in a bread basket mm -hmm. with nice linen and then you're gonna dip it in here. And you can oh, dip yeah, it, yeah, grab your mind. own, yeah, dip it, it, and then let me know. You dip, you dip, <laughs> you dip. Yeah, While you're dipping, I'm gonna be stirring. One thing about bread, when I took an etiquette class, what they always say, they say is that you break off a piece of bread that you're gonna eat. Yeah, well, that's not that. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, because you don't want to double dip or risk. Right. The, yeah. So I did. So if you were sitting down at the table, then I would have a bread plate, mm -hmm. and then you would be doing that. Right. Yeah. Tougaloo College. I took uh, etiquette class four semesters. Yeah, I took etiquette class too. It was called <laughs> Beatrice Hyman de Grant's house, <laughs> and she was like, "Get your elbows off the table." Yeah. <laughs> Four semesters. Um, my degree, I'm not. <laughs> I took uh, 27 years of Beatrice's classes. Yeah. This is very good, though. Thank you. You can taste the. Um, yeah. I think it's the pepper that's popping out. It is. It, it is. is. That's what makes it different. Is that that hot pepper? It is the red pepper. Yeah, it's the red pepper. And, that, and you know what? And it, you can taste it like at the back of your mouth. Yeah, it has a like you eat it at first, you're like, oh, it's good, yeah. and then you're like, oh, yeah. wait a minute. So that's how Italians eat their bread mm -hmm. with olive oil, not butter. So, we are coming to the end of our show, okay. and so basically... How do you know we're coming to the end of the show? Not, because what else uh, are we going to cook? We're going to pull you out. You're just going to make... Oh wait, hold on. Let me get the shrimp. Yeah, see? I'm not going to put the shrimp see, in. See, see, see how long it's on Facebook? I'm sorry. And she just tried to I'm say, sorry. we're coming to the end of... No, no, no. Three takes number one. Say when we come to the end of the show. Wait, I still got is, some more bread to eat. We got to put some I'm shrimp. sorry. I'm so sorry. We're okay. coming to the end of the <laughs> cooking portion. Thank you. Gosh, you can tell when two liters are. Hey man, there's no beast. Right, there's man. no beast. Okay, so, sure uh, that, so these are. This is raw, small. What you would call popcorn shrimp. Okay. You never want to um, cook already cooked shrimp. You right. never want to add that to heat. Okay. So if they're pink, don't add it to the heat because that'll turn rubbery. 
Right. So you always want raw shrimp, and they cook. They take like three minutes, yep. four minutes. Yep. But don't um, if it's if it's not raw, don't add it to heat. Okay. All right. So we're not gonna add the shrimp, but if you want the shrimp, you can add that for two or three minutes, and then you have the Brazilian inspired shrimp. So, All right. So tell everybody again exactly what we're having because you're about to pull off the soup, right? I am. Right, but we're gonna we're gonna um we're gonna cut, and I'm gonna be sitting at the table about to eat. Right. I'm gonna pull it off. Right. And it's gonna be like. They didn't teach you that in etiquette class, right? <laughs> so, so um, we'll be back in a few seconds, and you're gonna see this Brazilian inspired Spire, shrimp, shrimp spicy soup. Bomb. All right. All right. <clears throat> I just gonna show you. I'm wrapping up my soup. Um, thank you. Well, Shine's not only a great cook; she's a great host. Um, Sean, is there anything you want to share with the people about, you know, your show, how they can get in contact with you, how they can get some recipes for you? Just go straight to the camera and let them know while I... Hi, guys. So, I'm Lishan B. Hansen, and I love to cook. I love to cook for family and friends. I love to bring people together through cooking. If you want recipes, you can go on Let's Talk Food. I have a Let's Talk Food page where there are videos and uh, recipes and pictures as well. Um, if you're a young girl or know of young girls that um, want to learn how to cook, please go on my Lishan B. Hansen Facebook and uh, inbox me because I'd love to do something with the young girls and really inspire you guys to get back into the kitchen. So again, Lishan B. Hansen regular page, Let's Talk Food, has um, a, a variety of pictures and uh, recipes that you can choose from. Make them your own. Take mine, make them your own. All right, people. This is another episode of Closet Chef. I give it a sub. Yummy, yummy, yum in the tummy, tum, tum. I feel like a superhero right now. That soup was so good. I'm about to go outside and take my shirt off. Yo, until next time, Closet Chef, it's official. She's a closet chef. I'm a closet eater. And what are you? Until next time, never stop dreaming. <laughs>